In recent metas, especially on Lijiang Tower, Baptiste and Moira are often used on various different maps. While they do share similarities, they are not without their differences as well. Today, we will be covering both characters and how they interact within their signature compositions. As Moira, it is especially important to utilize the time between fights to your advantage, as an empty resource tank can mean a loss for your team. As Baptiste, it is important to know where you want to place immortality fields before the time comes for you to use it. You'll find that it is incredibly easy to perform when you already have a plan to execute. Quick reminder that tomorrow starts the Unranked to GM Ana Only series over at my Twitch, which you can find the link in the description. I plan on doing a mix of full calming as well as explaining what my thought process is for you guys to learn. Thank you so much for watching, and if you have any questions, don't be afraid to ask. See you all in the next one. So today we have something a little different. It's not just BAP. We have Moira and BAP. The metas are shifting. Well, I mean, maybe not to Moira, but we'll see. Um, if you want to introduce yourself, your name, your SR, what you're thinking you're doing wrong, anything else that you want to go, just go for it. All right, my name is Shadow. I'm a 4K Peak Flex Support player. I'm currently about 3.8. Um, I currently play for False Appearance Duality. Uh, we're currently competing in the UGC League. And yeah, this is going to be one of our scrim VODs. And anything that you think that you're doing poorly that you want to improve on here that I should look for? Um, probably just my spray usage on Mora is not exactly the best and my shift usage on Baptiste. Okay. Gotcha. All right. So just right off the bat, uh, we're playing six man. We're just going to get right into it. Uh, six man. The thing is, their comp's a little different. How? Uh, currently, they're running the Reaper, but we're on the Symmetra only to TP out, and then we do switch. I can't remember if we yeah. go Reaper or Tracer at the beginning. Okay. So, because he's on Reaper, is it actually a six-man? Uh, yeah, go ahead. I'm going to say yes, only because... Well, it's not exactly a dive yeah, it's okay. more of a brawly version i i mean because you told me earlier that you're a coach i i was hoping that you would understand like it's it functions more like a brawl than it does the six man i don't even call it six man i just call it like i don't even know what i call it like monkey brawl or something because the yeah. monkey's mostly using his cooldown to jump in the air so he can mitigate damage and then come back down it, it it's it's not like forcing cooldowns and then running and that was my big mistake when i first saw the comp i'm like are we playing this like six man like why the heck are we running reaper then uh that's when i was on attack mode too it was like one of my early scrims with attack mode when they were doing that but okay at least you understand that uh but let's see what goes on here moira into six man is a lot about keeping up and trying to keep your fate online especially when you're playing against a brawl really any comp when you're playing six man but yeah let's see this Already off the bat, you already know. I don't think I need to say anything. Just make sure you take the teleport if it's there. Don't want to waste the fade. Okay. Mm -hmm. Let's take it back a bit. I want to be a, lo a lot more, like, picky because I have a lot more time because it's Li Zhang, if that's fine. So I'm going to take yeah. my time and, like, kind of... Figure out what you want to do here. Here's here's my problem is more so like positioning than anything that you're taking unnecessary poke, which might force you to uh, use cooldowns early, uh, fade early, orb early. Generally, where I like to play is either behind this corner when I can see their Lucio. If, if I see the Lucio and he's not going for boop, you can play this bridge very, very tight. And the thing is that you don't want to fall into the trap of, of is thinking that Moira's left click uh is a short range beam it goes very 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 far almost to the point where i usually would play here and then walk into the engage because the thing is even though it's a small amount of damage it's putting you closer to using fade early and that's something that you really don't want to do and i know okay. you know that yeah um i would experiment with here your monkey should also probably be playing closer to the pole so that he's mitigating damage as well so you don't feel like you have to jump out to him it's not just a you thing, and that's that. I'm gonna comment a lot about the whole team because six man is really about the whole team. I do like how your Sombra, though, is in the back line and is scouting the Lucio or the Moira and trying to find a pick. It, it shows that at least you guys understand how to play six man basic 
from what I'm looking at right now. But let's keep looking here. Kill Orbin. I'm okay with that. My, my only problem here is just that you're very susceptible to dying because of how open you are. You're just very, like, exposed. Yeah, I'm exposed, but if they jump me here, I have the fade to get out. The problem is, is if they jump you, they want to get the fade out. You want to try to mitigate... You want to keep getting the value you are getting, but make it extremely hard to get out fade, because once they do, you're dead. Yeah. Because they have the mobility to do so, not only in speed boosts, but, like, jump boosters translocate even uh their own fade they, they have a lot of mobility and like the moment that fade is baited that you can like you can regroup for a minute or, not a minute or a second or two and then you're back in it's it's very very bad to get a fade right away but it wasn't awful definitely could be better but that's kind of how 4k plus is looking for just ulti I would rather your team like be in or out right now and not just kind of poking into their brawl. More of a team thing though. Just kind of got to play. That's huge. Should immediately be looking to play aggressive. We do. The healing orb. Could have went for a damage orb, but like not that big of a deal. The fade was up. It was good. Got out of the way. Okay. Macro wise, you guys killed the Moira. You pushed in. You knew to be aggressive there. You, you weren't scared. That's fine. It was good. A lot of this character is about macro stuff. Um, you can tap heal that or let Lucio heal. Okay. Uh, because of ults. I already have Cole. Yep. Uh, I understand it's very nitpicky, but the problem is with Moira is that it's all nitpicky. Like, her entire character is just about getting Cole quick. And, like, here's here's what, why you guys are going to, like, why I know you're just going to win this easy is that, like, you're, you're a far better Moira than this guy. You're beating him by 25%, and he's on Brawl, and he won first fight. I don't know, a little scary. Here's the thing here. If you don't spend time wasting resources on D.Va here, say you're low on resources, you can run up here, spam a little bit with your damage, run back. You can come over here if you didn't have coal yet, throw damage orb in. Uh, you have a lot more options when, like, right there, all you need to do, tap heal, let it linger, look for something. And that's really important on control. Or King of the Hill, uh, because you want to make sure that you're you're going into every fight with max re as ma as much resources as you can, or as many resources. Sorry, um, on your heels at least. My like the big thing with Moira is trying to eliminate idle time. You always want to be doing something. Okay. Because right here you could be you could be on max. Right here you don't need to do that. You can only you, you all you need to do is tap. Uh, I feel like you know that it's just a matter of someone saying it and then you're kind of like you would do it from that point forward I think that orb was a little too late because right now they see that they just ate the diva or the the orb Now they should really just be like, okay, we can hard engage not hard engage, but like look for something It's definitely putting your team at a disadvantage Yeah, so and if you're gonna go for a damage orb, you want to do it sooner Yeah, I also didn't really need to throw it there because I already had my ult and yeah, just that's just eating their Moira Cole that too it's if you do it sooner it's okay in the in the event that you don't have coal but yeah also another thing you could also have used your orb on diva earlier to just heal the diva up if your lucio was dead so that you wouldn't raise waste resources okay but yeah because here, here's the problem here you're on less than half resources you are not setting yourself you're not setting your team up to win this fight yeah, I think my plan was cold here. Yeah, EMP cold was cold. Which is good, but to be honest, even if you even if you have coal, I think it's I want you to get into the habit of not doing that. Okay. And like making sure your resources are good because honestly, that that EMP was so big that you honestly didn't even need to go. You could have just healed it. Um, yeah, we were we were just. But if the plan the is the plan, plan, I I understand that 100. percent Um, and I'm not gonna get super super picky on that unless i was like vod reviewing with you for a while and i could really just we could actually delve into that stuff it's a little harder when it's freelancing okay i i don't know what that was on there so i have but like like right here damage war being a little bit earlier after the co right here it's just too late because it's on an eight uh what is it eight or nine second cooldown you can get more value out of it because then your orb will be up by the time the fight starts I understand that this team isn't pushing and that you just killed the Sombra. 
But the thing is, against better teams, that stuff just won't happen. Okay. It just won't. I'd be looking for damage, honestly, right there on the D.Va. Because your, your Winston has the health to be fine. Um, just a big problem I see is just... Um, and I had this problem, too. I don't want to, like, completely dumpster, like, your confidence or anything. Um, it's just, like, try tap healing more. I used to do the same thing where I would just, like, hold the resources down. You can you can get away with tap healing every now and then. Yeah, especially because here, my get resource meter's done. <laughs> yeah. Resource management is so big for Moira, it's crazy. So right here, uh, I can understand you're fading if you want to then be right here and look for resources. The thing I didn't want to see you do is, I need resources. I'm going to fade to get here because then you're dead. Um, yeah. But right here, it seems like there's going... I'm predicting idle time. You're not going to go into the next fight with a lot of resources because you're kind of questioning what you want to do. Don't yeah, be afraid right. to be aggressive because fade is... You're not going to lose a fade. Yeah. Here we knew the call was the MP bomb. I fade out. Yeah, okay. That was good. Uh, but I, I still want to pull it back because mistakes are the ones i want to focus on here because here's the thing like right here there's like a good five seconds idle time if not more that we definitely could have gotten more resources okay and do you have damage uh set to score wheel down no it's set to my right click still okay i would set it to both it really helps uh it takes a little bit to get used to you still want the consistent beam with right click, but the scroll wheel down is really, 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 really helpful. Especially if you have one of those uh, Logitech mice that you can just like set it and go. It just goes ding, 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 ding. It's, it's, it's actually broken how fast you can get resources out of it. Okay. So like right here. Um. Well, the thing is, you know, they're going to EMP bomb. So going close could be risky because they could just bait out your fade and then go for the EMP. So... I, I can understand why you're a little hesitant here. My thing is, if you know they're about to go for it, throwing your damage orb here is, like, really, really risky. Because if they're going to EMP, you're going to want that healing orb to try to keep your team up. Okay. And for alt charge as well. Still, since you knew it was happening, that was pretty good that you uh, dodged EMP. And I know you win the fight. Or at least looks like you're winning the fight. We do win this fight. Uh, the problem is, is that this team should have capitalized much heavier on this. Because your team's positioning as well was not very great for the Diva Bomb EMP combo. But I'm not going to trash talk the enemy team if I can't see what's going on. Because it focuses on you. Diva. Okay, cool. I don't know why that's a thing. That's a good consistent beam of damage. Looks like you're tunnel visioning a little bit. If you're gonna, yeah, yeah, it's all that other stuff's a little bit too nitpicky to keep going on and on and on about. You throw the damage orb for alt charge, that's fine. Because they're just gonna be staggering. I like that your your immediate response when you heard Sombra hacking was to look for it, because that's kind of your job. If as Moira, you can like stop Sombra hacks, that's crazy good. Um, could have been a little bit more precise, but you said you're taking time to get back into things. Uh, I'm just I'm just saying good job at listening for the Sombra. That's good. And then you call. That's great. Fantastic. Uh, positioning of your team could have been better. I can't listen to comms to see if you're trying to get them to go somewhere. I like the damage orb. That was a good, good use of it. All right, yeah. Uh, not bad. The main thing I want to say there is resource management and getting your resources back. Uh, it, it was mostly... It wasn't you... It wasn't during fight that w most of your mistakes were. It was more so before the fight started. Yeah. But the problem um, is with Moira is that's like m a big part of her kit. Yeah. And also between fights, I'm our team's primary alt tracker and planner. Okay. Um... That's not usually conventional. Or I don't even know if that's the word I should use. That's not no what teams normally do. Usually um, the main sports job, but I yeah. we discovered that it's more efficient for me. Okay. That's great, but you're a good player. You're smart. You can do both at once. And I challenge you to do so. Okay. 
I mean, here's the thing with Moira. It's so much more important that you at least have those resources available and you're doing like the bare minimum things right. Uh, because if you don't, like, here's the thing you can know everything they're about to do, but if you don't have the resources to effectively counter it, you're not going to win. And you know that. So it's yeah. like, I think, I think Moira is an easy, it's easy enough mechanically, uh, to, to pull these things off at the level that you're trying to pull them off that you can do both. Cause I used to do both when I, well, when I wasn't playing in tier three. Or high high tier three, low tier two. Before I used to do alt track, fight plan, shot call. I did everything because I was really good at communications. But the problem is, as a flex support, you need to be able to you need to be able to pull off the stuff you need to pull off to give your team the best chance. But I think it's doable. I think this stuff is mostly an easy fix. It's certainly going to take a few scrims to really get the tap heal down. And understanding your, the distance and everything, but once you do, you'll find a lot more success. Yeah, that's the only map that I play Moira on for the... Like, yeah, I mean, you're not going to see Moira for a little bit, but once she comes back in meta, she'll definitely... Like, those concepts still apply. So Baptiste! Disappear like that. That's no I love me some Baptiste. I'm basically a Vapo TV. Who just plays a little bit of everything else yeah i'm an ana otp that plays a lot of everything else and very little ana because she's never good eh, don't bubble. yeah but like that's not enough for me <laughs> um, when do we get some action uh not right, sure cool. not sure how long we sat in the spawn for i think we screw right. up the dp here or, it might not have been this map no, it wasn't this map. Okay. Okay, make sure you're not going in front because they have junk. Uh, I understand you want to get there first. It is very, very, very risky, though. Yeah, you I get away with it. Here. It's just something that's very risky. Because if you do get, like, the spam will come uh, into this space here. Just want to make sure you're not over pushing, even by just a little bit, because that little bit can really, really, really mess you up. All right. All right, right off the bat, I understand that you're doing damage heal weave, but you don't need to. You ended up wasting five grenades when you didn't have to, and it's probably going to cost your team the fight. Because no, no damage has actually really been taken. Sure, he's taken a little bit, but I would argue that you're still fine. Right now, still, you're fine. Should still be looking for damage, but you've already used three nades. Now, yes, now it's like pure heal, go for it. Left shift, cool. Immo in a bad spot. Yeah. Could have been yeah. around the corner here. You understand yeah. that. Uh, that's why I'm going quick about that, because that's a little bit more glaring. Um, yeah. I was just and like now the healing's time. good. But now you're, you're, Ryan is half pinning in. Three more grenades would be able to win you this fight with ease. You're, you're really biting the bullet here because you used three grenades early. Yeah, I'm reloading. You do get away with it though. Better team. Nice. Uh, I'd be pushing with your team, yeah, just if your Ryan yeah. wants to be that aggressive. Uh, that's more of a team thing, not a you thing. Well, it, it could be you, but it's not micro. We understand everything that happened there, though, right? With yeah, resources keep, into here, ammo. Oh, yeah. grenades. And here's the thing. Every single BAP does this. Every single one. I don't care if they're Tier 3, Tier 2, Tier 1. I've watched it all. Every BAP does it. Until someone says, yo, dude, you're wasting your resources. And they're like, oh, shit. And then it it makes their play so much better. Uh, yeah. It's a lot. It, like, here's the thing with BAP. Fixing those mistakes and abilities is so tedious. Because all of his abilities require such precise timing. And, like, there are going to be times where you are too late. You're too early. It, sh it just takes time. It can be a little disheartening, but it takes time. Okay, I wanted to see a reload before they engage, at least. Okay, that's fine. It, it was a little risky just because before fight. You didn't need the left shift. You understand why. Yeah. You had time. I mean, in retrospect, you have time to... That was a really bad circle. Yeah. You have time to get back to here. In the moment, it's hard to see that. The problem is someone needs to point it out so you can be like, okay, 
it was just like I didn't you didn't get stunned by the rock so you're pretty much fine especially if, a, if you have a Lucio up there and you can just rotate around yeah I believe I used it because I was like 100 HP even then even then it's kind of like this is why BAP is hard you kind of have to gauge right in the moment if I didn't get stunned by rock and I'm still running and I'm pretty much behind the cover I should be fine especially against what they have I mean, if you see a junk nade flying at you, yeah, obviously you might want to hit that left shift. But if nothing's flying at it, again, much easier said than done. But it's the stuff you got to think about. Like, if they had a Kree that was all the way over there, like, okay, maybe you could say, yeah, I need to use regen burst. But the only thing that's logically really going to hurt you, yeah, sure, Lucio could. I doubt he has the precision to do that. Uh, Bap's not going to be able to, he, he could if he hits all headshots. Sig could do some damage, but you should logically get out of that fine, especially since your Lucio was up here on either heal or speed. It didn't really matter. Uh, I'm okay with that window. I wish they would have they would have actually committed a little more, but the junk is pretty far. Rough. Ugh, this fight is disgusting on, on a lot of other players as well. Welcome to Masters. Not, <laughs> not a very well... Uh, a well executed fight. You are a little out of position too. Just want to put that out there. Um, I just, I think the region first thing is a little bit more important to say. Uh, okay, so like right here, I would have waited for them to commit a little bit harder. The positioning of the window isn't awful though. It's, it's very, very good. I just would have waited longer so you could have caught them out harder. Because right now, they, I mean, you're getting blocked. Well, like yeah, here. we're blocked by the post, but I see on my screen, I see the Sigma out in front, the Lucio on the wall to our right, and then I see the Junkrat is in the LOS too, as well as part of Ryan's body. Problem is, he gets that shield up in time, he rotates around the corner just fine. If he's closer, like say right here, he's not getting out because he, he has a much farther distance to safety than right here. Like he should easily be able to just rotate around this corner in which he does. If you wait, if you wait for them to engage a little bit harder, you should be fine. Um, but that's not even like the main mistake I really want to focus on here. It's more so right here when your team starts pushing, um, and your SIG really wants to get aggressive there. Like here, I can't, I can't really pinpoint whether this is a mistake on you or a mistake on them. Is the call really to push forward? No. You set the MO up so that they it is for them to push forward? Yeah, I used it there just to save the uh, Sigma. Yeah. And I shift I'm not here, really gonna I go... think, just for the Sigma. Yeah, I'm not going to go too much more in depth on that MO, though, just because it... It could go either way. It's it's a little bit too nitpicky. I don't think. Here's the thing. I don't think you need the ammo. To be quite yeah. honest, I think you heal it up just fine. But it's tough to say. It's more so your team at that point. Left shift is good if they would have had a better window. You jump that? No chance. You were on the ground. I was, and I got fucking lucky because Reinhardt shatter is fucking. <laughs> A big slam. Just looking to keep the Ryan up. That's a fine left shift because of how much is going on. Okay, you're, dam you're damage weaving a lot, and that's fine. This is good. You're holding on to ammo, that's good. It could have been placed in a better spot. That was just to save gotten... Ryan from the tire. I get that. It could have been placed better it quicker which is really difficult but that's kind of what you got to do on bap because right here if you're bat i mean i would have placed it like around here not just i, I don't know i would have went for it it's hard to say let's let's point to five it man your ryan didn't even try to back up oh he was he was in trap i still would have i think if you actually put it like around this wall here just enough to see Ryan. I think it actually might survive explosion, because he he exploded it like here. And it's tough to say, but I, I would get into the habit of trying to look for cover. Okay, so then you keep the Ryan up. The left there. Keep, keep it behind cover, while it still gets value, which is hard, okay. because you have to be thinking about where you want to put it 
all the time, but if you never have that thought in your mind, then you're never actually going to be able to get better at it. Alright, this is great because you're, you're Lucio beaded and you're immediately looking for damage. I'm honestly okay with it. This fight is so chaotic. Taking the fight into your own hands with your window, totally fine. Aim could have been better. Not gonna, whatever. Solid. I like that left shift. Because everyone was crit and you start focusing damage. Great dodge. I mean, right now, this is pretty solid. The movement could be a lot better, but that's not really something I can teach. I mean, it is, but it's like... A, something that would be completely on its own. Uh, Macro-wise, that wasn't bad, though. At the end. Like, I'm totally okay with you using that window, even if it wasn't... It was just so chaotic that you wanted you wanted to make sure that threat was there, which is fine. Okay, I like the spot you're using. We tight here. Oh, uh, yeah. Immediately, as a team, you either have to get GTFO or look for alts immediately back. That's the thing with Simwall. Like, you either full commit right away or you just get out all the way. And Sim yeah. Simwall is so powerful in doing that. Yeah, we keep back backing all up. the way out okay. here. Because we don't have alts. Yep, but you're almost there. Looking for the that's a great like that's a great regen burst. Right now positioning is like really whack. You thought your team was gonna push, but they didn't? Yeah, I th I thought our Reinhardt was going to push up forward there, so I immo to allow him to go aggressive with it. My thing is, you pushing left here, I think, is wrong. You're Like, you're kind of looking for something that's backline. Here's what would have made this entire fight easier for you. Because you went this way. Make sure you're following line of scrimmage and going this way. And you, I don't know if you understand. Well, I'm going to draw yeah. it out again. The well, line yeah, of scrimmage here. Yeah. I understand what your goal is. It would have been easier to do that goal if you would have played with your Ryan, is what I'm saying here. Because yeah. you jumped the wrong way. Because line of scrimmage is like right here. And you go here instead of like back here in the pocket. Well, the reason oh. why I go to the left there is because I'm expecting the Rhine to push forward past the window. But I want to be out of line of sight of the window. So my goal here was to play around the pillar to be able to, you know, not be able to take any of that spam from the window while our Rhine pushes forward past Here's it. Here's my thing, right? I mean, hindsight always twenty twenty. The the bap is dead, so nothing from this window is really getting value. The other thing is that angle over this whole angle over here is still covered right here, and the person that really could use it is there. And the thing is, is that if the if you have a big angry German man pushing through here, that is the focus. The focus will not be you playing this cover right here too. Yeah. Or. I also the shield was... being here from Sigma, you're like you're definitely winning that fight easier, I think, if you're over here, because you're much more susceptible to junk mine or like Sim coming over here when you're alone. Yeah, well, junk was also one HP, so I think yeah. that's part of what I was going for was I was going left, trying to be a little bloodthirsty and get that junk rat out. It's high risk, but I'm not sure if it's worth the reward. We can look back at it. I might be wrong. Well... My whole play style is high risk, high reward. <laughs> the problem is there is that you don't want to put yourself in such risk that it's it's going to make you get less reward. Okay. Like, here's the thing. The, the, the extra reward you are getting, I think, is just not worth the risk, is what I'm trying to say. Like, it's just... The problem is the moment they see that, a good team just takes the fight here then. And that's exactly what they do. They should have capitalized here. Yeah, and the lamp, the thing is with the lamp, I'm not really going to say anything about the lamp because the lamp was affected by the positioning, not the actual lamp. Because here's the thing, if you were placed, if you were placed here, you could have just put the lamp here and then your team just spams for the win. We also have a sim in us right now. Like... There's a lot going oh, wait, on, I, but I fundamentally, fundamentally, the positioning could have been a lot, 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 lot better. The rotations, at least. With BAP, so far, what I'm seeing, uh, immo placement, definitely... Like, here's the thing. The regen bursts, they might be bad. Uh, they're, they, there was one bad regen burst there. Uh, I think when you're playing... When you play against better teams, it'll... You'll get caught out a lot more. 
So you'll see the bad MO or not bad MOs, the bad regen bursts. Because of what I'm seeing right now, and they're not really catching you out on bad rotations, bad positioning, the, the thing you really got to focus on with BAP, I think, is just like making sure that you're not risking an off angle so much that you're like susceptible to death. Because here's the thing, you're not going to get a lot of value, like in the fight where this is where, like, where you emote up here because your sig was pushing hard. We're on the same page of what that fight is. Yeah. I don't know if that's the same fight, but there was a fight where, like, you used regen burst here. Uh, because your Ryan was like here, like, sure. You have more sight on their back line, but the thing is they're, they're healthy. It's more beneficial for you to not have to use regen burst and not put yourself in that position and just spam down for mate on, on their shield. Because if Ryan doesn't have shield, you're, that puts you at a big advantage too. All right. Questions. Mm, nope. Not that I can think of. Does it all kind of make sense? Yeah. Okay. Let's keep it going. Night market was a shit show. I'm gonna say. As right it now. usually is, depending I, on the many comps you play. I did not die at all on garden or control center, and I died like five times on freaking night market. I think. Well, I see a doomfist, and that might be giving you some problems. Oh, they're running bull. You're running bulldoza. They're running bulldoza, but with a bap. All right, let's see it. Yeah. We run this comp every time we play Night Market. Baptiste Bulldozer. Alright. Let's see it. You can aim up a little bit. I mean, I've been seeing it a lot. I didn't want to call out your crosshair placement, but if it becomes an issue with your aim, just uh, take a look at it. Okay. I know that you're just looking for it or whatever, but... Okay, yeah, yeah, just looking for the TP. Yeah, that's a good regen burst. The... Immo, I'm not, I don't know. You guys were just late to the TP. It could have been yeah. much, much better. Yeah, we screwed up the TP. Oh, just one shot. That's all you need. Yeah, and I'm just missing there. Yeah, that's, yeah. I hate to tell you that, but you hit the shots. Maybe the fight's different. But it's right there, too. You hit the shots. Maybe the fight's different. Uh, but, yeah, whatever. Yeah, can't hit them all. Well, you can, but it's hard. You have to work at it. Yeah. Dude, my aim, not inspirational. You don't want to come to me for aim, but Someone's I understand goes, the importance of it. My aim goes through periods where it's either perfect or I can't hit the side of a bar. Yeah, consistency is definitely a part of aim as well, uh, but they're on Moira now, which I would suggest you switch to if they're running Bulldozer. Because you're not going to have a fun time on BAP if yeah, they play the comp right. We you're just pl you're BAP. playing for window. You're playing for window. I hope. Yeah. Okay. That was a bad re regen. You heard the Winston jump. You got scared. Not worth it. Because here's the thing. If it's just the Winston jumping from behind, because you could see the, the shield here from Ryan. If wherever the Ryan is, the team's going to be. And if not, then, well... You would have also heard the Doomfist slamming, and you would have already just been dead. Uh, I would say your reaction should not be regen burst when you hear Winston jump. Your reaction should be, where is Winston? And then you can, in that split second, then make the decision of, if he's going to hit me, then yes, I need to hit my regen burst. Right here, you just got scared. Uh, inst my, my only reason why I'm bringing this up is I want to give you avenues to take. Uh that aren't panic so like i it, it's easy just to say yeah lol just don't panic but there has to be an avenue that you can do instead of panic so that you have something to pull out so you're confident uh, okay. out. yeah this map yeah i played so rough but that's that's good for in terms of fodder view this is a good uh that's a great window ammo placement not good take the extra take the extra time well the ammo placement was it was reactionary to the shatter on that one yes I get that it's reactionary. Make your reaction here, not here. Because here's okay. the thing. Lamp is always going to be reactionary. Make make the reaction better. Lol, okay. just get better. Five head. Here's the thing. I hate I hate saying that, but like that's just the reality of what makes BAP difficult. Like being that precise on the fly. Because ultimately, it gets destroyed and then your team's going to die. It's a lot harder to destroy if it's in a better spot and then you have more time to heal them. Then you maybe have a win. 
Yeah. Or one fight. Yeah, and right there we lost both of our, or yeah. both our tanks were shattered. So, and I got juggled. <laughs> like maybe, maybe it doesn't win you the fight. It gets you more heals. It, it, the the possibility is there, and that's the problem. So you want to make sure you have that possibility. Here's where I would switch to Moira, honestly, because yeah, they're playing Bulldoza. That yeah, and you don't, but still, it's it's like a big thing for flex supports. You have to understand when it's time to switch Moira. 100%. Okay. It's a big problem I have because I'm like, I don't want to play Moira, but you have I to play Moira. I hate Moira with a passion. Every time I my personally, coach calls I, Moira, I yell. <laughs> I like Moira because there's a lot more that goes into her kit than people realize. Uh, and I think, I hope that you see that as, as well when you fix the stuff you were doing wrong in Moira before. You'll come to find that, like, it's a lot, it's a lot of fun to know that you are, like, min-maxing the crap out of the character. In my, in my personal opinion. Before, when I, like, knew nothing about Moira, I was like, yeah, this character's boring, you just heal. Uh, but when Poke actually coached me on the hero, I was like, this is, like, one of my favorite heroes in the game now. At a high yeah. level. When you're playing yeah. it in, like, Plat, no. That, just get on Ana. It's more fun. Yeah. Moira drove me nuts because of the, uh, Winston Brawl six-man meta. I mean, that was a fun meta for me, personally. I, I hated that meta so much. Didn't need the left shift. Do you understand Ana. that? You guys, yeah, I can understand if it's an engagement, but the thing is, you haven't actually, like, taken the engagement yet. Yeah. So by the time it even, yeah. Then here, the call was just... I like the left click. Uh, this is good. Like, you're not using resources when you don't have to. I'm fine with that ammo placement, because this point is very open. You're not going to get much better. You guys won that fight so fast. Yeah, cool. Thank so here's trail. the thing. Here's the thing that I really am, oh, am very the, sketched about because they're running a TP. You guys have to either that. They hold that trick point. so hard or they are going to TP the point. If they your team is, point. yeah, here's the thing. If your team is not aware of this, you need to scream this. I understand you're all tracking, but like screw the all tracking, get into the, yo guys, they have TP. Why are we pushing this far? Like if we're going to push this far, we need to be like in there, in there. Um, and the problem with being in there, in there is that when the team sees, oh, you guys are right here. We're just going to go high ground and jump up here. And then you're eventually just gonna have to walk back anyways. Yeah, our off tank is the uh, fight planner and he called for us to push up there. Just, that's great. And I understand he's making a mistake. Just be the better player, bro. Tell him off, let's go. <laughs> like, that's honestly what you have to do. Like, uh, I understand it's not your mistake. Prevent other players' mistakes. Just be be that great. Be Be that good at the game, you know? Because anyone's able to do it. Uh, like Noxious, I don't know if you know, well, he's Shade now. I'm not sure if you know him. Hit scan player, communication is what sets that dude apart. It's not his aim. His aim's fine. It's fine. But like the communication on that man, especially on this map right here. Like he is, he is known for his sim on this map. My boy, Noxious OW. I know you're Shade, but I'm still calling you Noxious. Okay. Any questions, by the way? I, I just went off in a tangent. Um, not that I can really think of, although I'm not sure what you just opened. <laughs> I just my music. Sorry. Okay. Uh, yep, they TP to point. Uh, rookie yeah. mistake from the team. It's not actually not a rookie. So many people do it. Pushing in through the coal. Uh, ammo was not needed. Why? Um, I actually don't know why I emoed there. That, that might have been a fat finger. <laughs> Yeah, uh, definitely a fat finger. Whenever you see a beat, you, your first thing should just be damage, 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 damage. Who am I, who are we focusing? Uh, and Immo should be the last thing you're thinking about until you see that the, the beat has run out. You know that. Let's not go too much. Oh, unlucky. Well, let's, let's go back into the fight because there was so much that happened there. And that's that's happened one too many times. Okay, so first, you guys set yourself up for failure because now they have point control and you are in a very bad spot. Yeah, but we do win the retake. Okay. Right here. Beat. You saw a crit, and you're probably like, oh no! But beat is a thing. And if your monkey dies there, it's not your fault. Um, MO, cool, whatever. Oh, that's unlucky. You looked away. Um, I would just always be having your exabooch charged, but there's so much other thing. There's so many other mistakes that you've made that are not worth it. Not like so many, like, oh my god, you're such a bad player. More so, there's so many other things that you could work on that are just more important. Um, yeah. yeah, I mean, yeah. if I can 
completely sucked, I would never would have got to 4K. <laughs> well, no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> there are some players. There are some players that should not, not. Yeah, but those are different. Those are different stories. And this is this is not one of those stories. Yeah. All right. Let's see what you do here on the retake. I think I back off. No, I don't. I think this is I would really in to try to help our spot. Okay. Oh fuck! I thought he was coming back towards me. Right yeah, there. I'm not even gonna comment on this. I would have just went down through main and looked for all charge, but I think you probably communicated to your doom that you were coming on that side so you could help him. Whatever. And I die for it. I mean, I'm not gonna coach it. Whatever. That definitely was not winnable. That's more of a team thing than a micro thing. Yeah, Alright, you have window. Just... Let's see how you use it. You're gonna have to use it in a very weird way against this comp, but let's get into it. Three, two, one, window, pog. Alright, this is great. This is great. Regen burst. Uh, I think it was a little early. I understand you're about to engage, but still, you didn't actually fully commit, so you want to make sure you're actually committing and some damage was taken before you use that regen burst. Uh, great left clicks here. That's, that's a much better place demo. It's not perfect, but it's much better. You tunnel vision on that Kree a little bit too long. Make sure you just hit one grenade and get right back to the fight because now someone is crit and your screen did not see it. Yeah, uh, I have a bad habit of just trying to get everyone to full sometimes. Don't. don't drop that now. You want here's, here's what you really should be aiming for. How low can I get them to still win the fight? Like, how much damage can I actually do? Damage is healing. How, how much do I actually need to heal them? Here's the thing. People in ladder will hate you for doing that. And that's what I used to do at the end of my stay. Because I was trying to become a better player. But people in ladder hate that shit. Because they're like, bro, I need to be at full health. You don't need to. Just get into the habit. Just know that you're, you know. The, the, problem with, the problem is, every support player gets into the habit of doing this. Because in ladder, people always complain, I didn't get healed. Wah. They don't see it from your point of view. Yeah. Reports traumatizing in ladder. Yeah. It, it's awful. Uh, but, you know, it's still fun to roll. Okay, yeah. aim could have been better, whatever. Support is a fun roll, and you can fight me on that. It's, uh, I don't know about the main support players. They don't know some of their Main support's fun, if you're, if you're a good Lucio. Lucio and Brig can be fun, if you enjoy fucking up other people's fun. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, this is uh, on your Rhine. I wouldn't even have emoed it. I would have just peeked out and healed. You didn't, Cause he has shield, they're not pushing that. You use emo early. And you're gonna lose the fight. Okay, maybe not. Okay, no, you got away without using it though, because you had to overcompensate with all this. We understand why the end was bad. I understand your Ryan made a mistake, but like at that point, you could still peek out or do splash heal. If he dies there, I'd rather you have mo than not. For everyone else. Yeah. Because he can make he can fix that mistake. I don't want you to come and fall into a bad habit because of his mistake. I don't know if we win this fight or not. I think you we should. Yeah, we do. Because have... I am more. I window back and forth. So as they drop. Which is perfect. Immo was early. Didn't need it. Tunnel vision a bit hard. You don't know what's going on on point. Holy shall we? Yeah. Yeah, you actually lose that. Okay. Yeah. Immo was early. Possibly something that could have won you the fight. Probably very, very possible that it could have won the fight. Is that already the end of the VOD? Well, yeah, I guess it has it. been about 40 minutes. Okay. Yeah, that's the end of that Questions map. before I give you the kind of like what I think? Mm, not really. You've done a pretty good job of like going over what I need to do as far as my Immor and my shift usage. Okay. So I'm going to split this up into two sections. First one's Moira. And the only thing I have for Moira, really, well, positioning is one. That kind of goes for both. Um, I think the big thing is just, like, always doing something. Uh, I guess just, like, resources is, like, a really good way to sum it all up. So just managing down, managing down, managing downtime and also tap, tap heal. Tap okay. heal, tap damage. I'm just going to put down tap. Because that's something that is very important as well. I don't want you to only think about downtime. What are you doing in that downtime? What, in, in the middle of a fight, 
when there's a little bit of downtime in the fight, how are you going to use your tap heal? Are you tap healing your DPS but when they're about to engage? Like when your Sombra's about to EMP and like throwing in a translocator, are you tapping her? Because it still heals her while she's she's full health. Uh, she takes damage. It's effective HP, if that makes sense. Yeah. So that's like the big thing for Moira. I could go more in depth, but I don't think you want me to. I'd rather, I mean, I'd rather put more stuff into BAP. Uh, the big thing with BAP is going to come down to Immos. And I understand that Immos are reactionary, uh, but you want to make sure that you're putting Immos in good spots. Uh, that That's like the first thing I would look at with Immo is just like placement. Uh, place. Uh, my handwriting's so bad because I'm lefty and I aim with my right hand. Oh, God, I don't know how people do that. Uh, placement. I'm just going to put place. The second one is threat. And this is really hard. You said you watched my BAP guide? Question mark? Yeah. The whole idea of do I really need to use this MO? Can I heal them? It wasn't as glaringly obvious as the placement. The thing is, I think placement is like the first, the first block. The first building block to then get to seeing when, like when you're messing up your timing. Um, but getting, getting placement down and like trying to get it in as much cover with as much, uh, value as possible. It's very difficult. Uh, it's the thing is, it's what makes BAP BAP. If BAP didn't have Immo, he'd be a really bad character right now. Act, maybe not. He's maybe still, not, he, he he's still, still a little overtuned and, you know, good <laughs> heals, good damage, good mobility vertically, uh, good regen, whatever. Immo is still, you know very much a big Broken. part <laughs> yeah the baptiste is such an ability based character thus the abilities will get stressed upon and your precision with those abilities is very very important number two i could go into regen burst but i'd rather you actually look over the positioning because i think the positioning is kind of making you use your regen bursts it's a lot harder to actually get the resources right like it's hard to use burst when your positioning is also kind of affecting your bursts but that doesn't mean that number three isn't going to be bursts because i th i still think regenerative bursts are a big problem um but it's not something that you should really really hard focus on i think i think there are more underlying problems that are affecting the bursts even though the bursts you're messing up a lot i think they they are uh, influenced by other things. The resource management with the grenades could be better too. It was not as glaring as this ammo or the positioning problem as well. Like, there's a lot for you to improve on a BAP, but it's spread out among a lot of things. I think the ammo and positioning are the first things that you really have to worry about. But that's not to say if you do see yourself doing really well in these level scrims and you think that you want to work on something else, look at your notes, focus on one thing. Uh, during a scrim at a time unless you're a sub and you only get like one block a week like me when i was playing and i was doing content and i had finals uh then i just was like all right i'm doing everything but it worked because i wasn't playing every day so i i had more of a brain capacity to do so uh also yeah, just for I'm a good starter, practice so. yeah you're a starter so it's a lot harder uh to do that kind of stuff number four aim arena uh, if you've watched one of the VODs before, I'm, you've already said you do aim arena, aim arena, aim arena 15 at half an hour a day will make aim better. will make movement better. When you're doing aim arena, I think what's more important for you would be making sure you're 80 strafing. You're not over jumping. I think movement's a little bit more important for you right now than aim. Cause there were a few times with the positioning that rotations and, and like movements were also kind of factoring into that kind of stuff as well. Um, but that's all I have in terms of the notes. Do you have any questions? Um, not that I can think of at this moment. Okay. Um, is there anything that you want to plug before I give my final thoughts to everyone that may be watching this on YouTube? Um, no, I think I'm good. Did you want to plug your team discord? Uh, yes, the team discord. I'll be sending you the link for that. It is okay. cross appearance esports. We got a whole community there. So come join. We do pug nights on Wednesdays. Oh, Pug Nights on Wednesday. That's actually perfect. What time? 10 o'clock. Eastern? Yeah, right after oh. scrims. Smart. Okay, yeah. Solstice used to do that as well. Uh, I think on Fridays, but... um. Used to be uh, does that team we have a team Wednesday. Twitter as well? Uh, yes. Let me send that. Send Twitter. that to me as well. I will also put that in the description. But if you don't have any other questions, I'm going to leave chat. Give my final kind of thoughts. And then um, that'll be the wrap. Uh, stay here, though. I will come back after I'm done with that. Okay, guys. So, 
if you guys are watching this on YouTube, I really appreciate you guys for watching this, but I'm going to give you guys a little premium thing that he doesn't really get until he watches the video. Uh, good player. Definitely is very smart. Understands what he really should be doing. It's more so his execution in doing so. Um, I think he's scared to mess up, but the problem is, is that's what every support kind of falls into when you've been playing for so long and you've heard so much crap. Um, but I think uh, he knows what he's doing wrong. I think it's a lot easier when you see it on a page you see it from another player that that has gone through the same stuff and you put it into action so i think that he's a good player i think that he's going to find some success i i see him hitting at least 4.2 or like if he really wants to grind 4.3 even if he really wants to grind this stuff out in at least a month not at least a month at most a month he, he, he hits he hits some bigger sr 100 percent um but yeah, if you guys did enjoy this, this was a Fiverr VOD. So if you are interested, it is $10 a VOD over at Fiverr. Uh, I've been getting great reviews, which I really, really appreciate from everyone that has been doing this. I have been doing some offline. I haven't been uploading everyone to YouTube. But yeah, I really appreciate you guys for watching. Uh, just let me know if you have any questions in the comments down below. But until next time, I've got a peace out and paz out. I'll see you all in the next one. Thank you so much for watching. Peace.